What is going on? Enjoying What's the like, up? lovely, lovely evening sun. Can you hear me? Here we go. What's up, Instagram? What's going on? Hello, everybody, and welcome. So you can hear me okay, bro? I can hear you perfectly. Perfect. So before we um, dive in, hello, everybody. Everybody who has joined in, who is coming, you know, First and foremost, apologies, I've never done this before. I do not know anything about technology. So if there's going to be some uh, little sounds here and there, you know, please forgive me. I'm just learning this. But I, I believe that the message is the more important thing. So <laughs> you probably all think about, like, what the hell is Morse code by Vesa? So let me just tell you in a nutshell. So it's a interactive platform since we are all locked up in our houses and living in this very crazy times so i just wanted to give something back to my industry to the community and people outside of the industry just to have that chance to tell how they do it so think this as an open therapy session for everyone <laughs> and uh let's let's get back to it so like i'm i'm super excited to introduce to all of you my dear friend yossi fisher my first ever guest uh, and I'm gonna give the floor to you. If you could tell me whereabouts are you Morse coding your message today? I'm Morse coding live from Milan. I'm in Italy right now. Um, and uh, in lockdown, it's been 14 days. Well, I left my house yesterday for the first time in two weeks. Um, and I locked the door behind me and we'll see how much longer this goes. <laughs> but you, you, you clearly like, obviously I didn't mention that I am I am in the lockdown in uh, London, UK, so we've kind of like now closing in like three weeks, more or less. And uh, so you've been doing it way, way longer, obviously. Yeah. In Milan. Yeah, because I mean, I've been completely locked down for two weeks, but the week before that, I only left my house three times to grocery shop. And then the week before that, everything already started closing down. Um, but you've been super responsible. Like the second it hit in Milan, I feel like you've, <laughs> I feel like you've been self isolating like as long as we have. Like, yeah. Like, well, I, I, I believe that because I'm, I'm self employed, so I do have the luxury of, you know, kind of manage my time and, you know, move around with the fact. But you know, for me, it was kind of obvious that you have to react. The quicker you react, the quicker it's going to be over. Like, it's a group effort. This is not about, you know, a choice or a preference. It's just kind of like what we have to do. But anyways, before we crack on, could you please tell all of our viewers, who are you? What you do in a nutshell? Like, I know that this doesn't have to be about, like, an elevator <laughs> pitch to a uh, profession, but just to, like, let people know who you are. Sure. So my name is Yossi Fisher. For anybody that does not know me, maybe you've seen this beard around. You have no idea who I am. Um, I'm a brand consultant and creative strategist. I've been in the industry, uh, fashion and business for about 20 years, marketing, communications and branding. Um, I own a um, branding and brand development communication studio called Yossi Fisher Studio. Um, born and raised Toronto. Uh, Lived in five different countries, worked in every major uh, industry capital in the world, and now I'm based here in Milan. Amazing. I just kind of realized that I didn't even tell your followers or the people who don't know who I am what I do. So I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, please. So, uh, my name is Vesa Beracula. You know, it's, it sounds very exotic, but my surname in uh, Finnish means the back village. So, just so you know, so you can call me Vesa. It's probably easier and, and better. So I'm a fashion stylist and art director, but I dabble into a lot of things. I'm sure you've seen the elaborate like trailers and stuff. So I'm kind of like sort of one man band. 
does music, who does editing, who does something. Just a curious little individual now immersing myself in the social media world and live sessions. So, but I'm sure like you will, you will get bored of my face throughout the weeks because there's a lot of things to come. So I'll, I'll tell you snippets here and there. But uh, how we're going to do this today? So obviously we are scheduled from six to seven. So the first thirty minutes or so is going to be our in-depth conversation. So all of you people you see on just about in the middle, there is a question box. So if you have any sort of things that you would want us to cover at the interactive section, the last 30 minutes of this uh, program. So please, please, please tap in there uh, your questions so we will get through as many as possible. Yeah, really hoping so. Let's, 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 let's get through these because I think it's gonna be really exciting to see what people, we said nothing's off limits. Nothing try, off limits. try to keep your crude questions to yourself. I mean, you can ask pretty much everything, but uh, you know, uh, maybe sexual questions. Maybe this isn't the right platform for it. Uh, maybe that's for you know. Maybe that's for for, for onlyfans.com. Exactly. Um, but anyways, and, and pretty much anything goes. So I'm ready. Sweet. So my first question is just like straight up from the back. How are you, how are you doing? How are you feeling right now? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty good. I think that we're all essentially in the same boat. I think the rest of the world is really starting to feel that pressure of like things really changing. Um, you know, I think for me, I'm really grateful because I work from home a lot as well. So it hasn't been too much of a change because my environment is, is essentially the same. Um, and to be honest, there's, <laughs> there's actually more people to speak to now <laughs> because so many people are at home and like just kind of hanging out. So I'm doing, you know, just a lot of FaceTime with friends and family that haven't had a chance also because of the time difference. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Like I was, uh, talking about it a couple of days ago, but, uh, like I said, I left my house for the first time yesterday in two weeks. And when I left my house, like, and I walked outside all of a sudden, I got like flush with emotion. Like it really hit me that I've literally been in my house for two weeks, and I didn't expect it. Like it wasn't like sadness, and it wasn't happiness. It was just all of a sudden like, whoa! Like it's really actually been fourteen days. Um, so that was kind of interesting. But otherwise, I'm doing pretty well. Like you know, emotionally, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm definitely doing what I need to every day. Like I'm sleeping when I need to sleep. If I want to take a nap in the middle of the day, I will. Um, keeping my mental health game strong. So I'm meditating, um, journaling. Uh, I do a lot of like guided meditations because I find that right now when I try to just like sit there and meditate, there's just too many thoughts. Like it gets really distracting. So I find guided meditations work really well and I'm exercising. I'm just doing half an hour every day just to get my heart rate up. Um, but yeah, I'm doing pretty well, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing a lot of lives and, uh, you know, really trying to help a lot of people through this time, um, you know, answering a lot of DMs, uh, replying with a lot of voice notes. Um, you know, I think that a lot of us feel lost right now and I'm trying to do my part in the industry, uh, not to take advantage of people right now, but to really provide some clarity where I can. Um, obviously, there's only so much I can help in specifics, but I really try to kind of guide people the best that I can. So it's actually making me feel better because it's still making me feel really useful and I'm getting a lot of really great feedback on how it's helping people and like, I guess that's kind of how I'm making the most out of this time, right? I'm trying to like give and, and connect um, like deeper than usually we, we, like any of us really can. We usually have so much stuff going on. It's so hard to focus, but um, oh, that's kind of where I'm at. Well, that sounds great. I, I, my, mine is pretty much the same. Mine is the meditation because I can't meditate for like not even two seconds. You know, I start thinking about some completely ridiculous sort of thing. So, but for me, it's like, you know, um, I totally understand the sort of um, how you felt, felt like when you left the house because for me like I've, I've always been a bit of a loner even in, in my work environment obviously I work with people the teams change and all of that sort of stuff but I've, I've kind of noticed now that since being in, on lockdown I obviously I live with my partner so I have somebody to talk to on a daily basis but I notice now when I pop into the supermarkets like I'm starting to get a lot of anxiety and I'm, not okay. talking, and I'm not talking about like sort of nice anxiety. Uh, I don't, I don't feel comfortable of going like for the allowed, you know, one hour of daily exercise in the parks. Like I, I personally find it that it's not the right way. It's, it's a bit of like a question mark, or I don't feel comfortable with it. I'm not saying that if, if you are doing that, I'm not condemning. But uh, 
for me, it was been, I'm more comfortable when I'm at home. So I feel completely fine here. And obviously now, because I have this project that I, I get to have you, which is exciting. A lot, and a lot of people, so it's literally kept me going 24 seven from the moment I get up. Like I even skip, I've skipped meals, exercise and everything. Just to be like, let's get this show on the road. You know, because I'm, I'm so super stoked just here you and who is going to be the next one just to you know explode my mind so to speak. yeah and listen and i mean just to take a quick second like i really appreciate uh, me being your first guest um you know i have a lot of respect for you and uh i know this is something really fresh for you and um you know i really really do appreciate that it's uh it's a really nice feeling to uh you know to be invited onto this no but uh from from that like i really appreciate that and from that actually we're going to go to my next question because there's there's re there's a uh a reason within that question and the answer why you are my first guest so i'm gonna ask oh, you, okay so i'm gonna ask you uh describe every, to everyone the first time you met me be brutally honest and where that happened in your whole Okay, so we met during London Fashion Week um, for, I think it was, uh, was it spring, summer, I don't know, it was about two, three seasons ago, I don't really remember, they kind of mashed up, and I believe that we were sitting at, Ap was it Apujan? No, no, it was, it was, it was, uh, I just remember it was a, a fashion show. Just it like, was a fashion show. So I remember like, so I'm sitting there, I'm sitting front row there. Like I sit down and I, I travel around to fashion week solo, uh, because I kind of need to navigate. Right. So I'm sitting there on my own and, uh, I just kind of sit beside you and you, you just look like just so either not happy or so hungover or like, I don't even know what. And I'm, and it's funny cause people are always like, Oh, what do you love about fashion week? And I'm like, honestly, the people that are sitting on my right, and my left, because I'm really extroverted. So I'm very outgoing. I'll like say hi and whatever. And I like said hi to you. And you were just kind of like, Merc. <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> so your energy was like, and you were being an asshole, but I still didn't know you then. So I was like, maybe you're being an asshole. I'm like, but I don't really fucking care. Right. So for me, I'm just like, you're sitting beside me. And then we just kind of like barely kind of spoke, but we kind of like, like merch to each other back and forth during the show when stuff was coming out we like looked at each other whether we liked it or didn't like it um and then we just kind of and then that was kind of that and then you like i think uh, we left the show and then afterwards you were like hey like i saw you again and then you were like bro i'm super hungover <laughs> yeah, but you were just a really cool guy I, I, it was um interesting because i didn't know if you were or not uh but you yeah. turned out to be really awesome yeah because because like for a lot of people it who don't know me you know like i am like six foot four you know can be at times very intimidating even though i'm like massive kid at heart but like it, it was definitely like i i used to have this sort of like uh almost like a tradition that didn't happen on last fashion week but the prior ones and there was always some sort of like shadow party or like massive party i i believe it was like ranking party or some sort of very big like i think you were at the ranking party i think you were the ranking yeah. party before so I remember, I remember, like we went there, like with, with, uh, with my partner, and we got like absolutely smashed. Like I mean, it's like you know, you drink, you drink the bar empty, and then some, and then you continue to Soho, and I literally slept like two hours. Don't know how the hell I got into the fashion show at like what 10 a.m. and literally rolled. Yeah, it was early, and, early, I think, like, like nine o'clock for show of the season. Yeah, and clinged on to the goodie bag to see if there was water because I was. Too <laughs> I remember to, like, that too. I remember. And then I, then I just remember you also said like, well, what did you think about the show? And I was like, exactly how I feel inside right now. And then, <laughs> so, that's, so, that's, so, so question for you actually then. So like, so what, what was your first impression of me then when you met? Because I know that a lot of people have different impressions of me when they first meet me. No, because like for me, like I, I, uh, I'm very, I always notice people. Like I'm very visually always like I analyze like how people move what they wear not in the sort of sense that i would like measure measure anybody else but just kind of like okay you got my attention and then then i was like okay he seemed he has that sort of like energy that i can vibe with but you oh. know at that moment i could not vibe even with myself like, so I don't that's true. um and then then you just sit next to me and to be honest like i just remember feeling so 
embarrassed. I was like, this dude is talking to me and I can't like, I was like, I smell like shit. <laughs> and then, but I just, I just kind of noticed you straight away. And then I kept on seeing you throughout the shows. And for some, some sort of reason, like the universe threw us together. We were sitting next to each other in every goddamn show. And I was like, okay, yeah, what did you, say? you know, let's just do this. And then ever since it's been like, like sort of like brother from another mother, really. Yeah, your homies, bro, 100%. Cool. Well, on to the next one. So that there's, there's the answer. Like, well, like cool. so it, was, cool. it, was, it was like a little cryptic there. Well, but I, I noticed that you are, a, you are a married man and uh, you are currently doing your isolation without your lovely wife. Would you, want, would you want me to kind of like let everybody know like how you're dealing with that? Because I'm sure that there's a lot of people are um, forced to be apart from their loved ones. Yeah, totally. Um, so exactly. So I am married. Um, I've been I've been married for about two and a half years. Been with my wife Andy Fisher for about five plus. Um, she's a tattoo artist, and so around January she travels a lot for work as much as I do. Um, so around January, just before Fashion Week, she flew out to Toronto um, because she had a lot of clients to take care with over there. So she flew out. And then she was going to spend a couple of months there and then go to Taiwan and because she's got a lot of clients in different countries. But while she was in Toronto, this whole thing broke out here in Milan. So obviously she wasn't traveling. So we had plans to meet in Taiwan um, after a couple of months and spend a few weeks there. Um, but that didn't end up working out. So she's in Toronto right now. And, um, you know, I guess like. It's interesting because some people are handling this isolation like because they're alone and that's an issue um and other people have you know spouses they're not with they're, they're not usually with all the time and now they're with all the time and so you know i don't think i'm better off or i think everyone has their dynamics um i think the one thing for me that i've really noticed about you know uh long distance relationships and especially during this time because not only are we like you know apart but we're also essentially self-isolating so there's like additional distance within our own individual lives like that we're dealing with um i think the one thing i really noticed with andy is um you know when you argue if you're in a relationship and you're with somebody and you argue then you know like sometimes you need just like a few hours you go for a walk or you know you kind of sleep it off or you know you kind of you kind of need your little space but then you're there to comfort each other you're there to uh, cuddle, you're there to, you know what I mean? Like make love, you're there to make each other dinner, say nice things. Um, energetically you're together. Uh, but now we don't have that luxury. So when we get into an argument, um, then we have that space off of the phone. But when we come back, it's like, we're still apart. Like we're still just on the phone and, um, you know, it, it, it's still a healing process. Like we, you know, we still work through our, our, just like any married couple or any relationship, but that level of like you know, being upset at each other, but then coming close and like being comforting to each other, like on a physical level, like just the actual caress itself is missing. So that's a little bit difficult. You know, it's a little bit trying. Um, also right now, you know, we had plans. So when we travel for work, we generally have like checkpoints. So, you know, like I said, she was going to be in Toronto for a couple of months and then she was going to go to Taiwan and then I was going to meet her there. And then she was going to go back to Toronto and then I was going to go to Toronto. And so we kind of had this plan and it's been diverted now because we don't know when flights, when borders are going to open up. And that makes it a little bit difficult. I mean, um, you know, we're doing the best that we can. I think like everybody, we do a lot of FaceTimes, you know, we're, we're making a point like literally in a couple of nights uh, or tomorrow night, we're actually doing like, we're just going to have a date. Like we have a date night, you know, we've been talking about literally just putting on the same movie and just keeping our phones on. And so we're kind of like sitting beside each other watching the same movie. So at least we can like still talk to each other and like comment on the movie and, you know, just trying to, trying to minimize the distance I think is really important because otherwise it just becomes a voice on the phone and you really want to make sure that you, you know, you do what you can to, um, I don't know, kind of, you know, just do whatever you can right now. So we're trying our best. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I think everybody has their challenges, but, uh, you know we're really strong and uh we have a lot of a lot of trust and um you know we're, we're we have a really special relationship that allows us to just travel in general um but um yeah i mean this is a learning process for everybody so you know i just just like everyone else i think we're just really trying to do our best oh but that's really lovely like thank thank you so much for sharing that because it's, it's kind of like reminds me of the sort of thing that 
what a very, very special person in my life, uh, an older, older person who is not with us anymore, always used to say to me that, like, you know, like when you found the right love, it's like it's two, almost like this sort of two paradise birds who are in the same cage, but the door is always open for the other one to fly and then fly back home. So I think it's it's um, such a such a beautiful thing for you to actually share that to a lot of people who you don't even know because because there there certainly is a lot of questions. I've seen a lot of this sort of bad taste, um, bad taste like jokes around like oh how many. Uh, marriages are going to come to an end how how many many people are going to like end up hating each other when when the, the reality is that these are actual problems and we're talking about like how, how many people there are currently in relationships that they have to be afraid of their lives for example so it's not even a choice Very you know that, that there's, there's a lot of uh, men and women who who are in abusive relationships and you know like this this for example the situation is completely you know May, may make the world for them like even a worse place so so there's all of this sort of stuff so it's really really uh important for someone like you or or me to kind of say that it's okay to say that it's difficult you know for me personally like i'm in a relationship uh i have great communication with my partner but you know like i've learned throughout this process so much about myself you know that it's almost like you have to face yourself that you can't always just build your identity or your relationship on the other person it's you kind of have to check yourself to see like oh dang it wasn't always about them maybe the problem was me for example so this is the sort of sort of sort of stuff that I, what i've been thinking about a lot like almost like self-checking yourself like hey mister you know yeah. You know, it's, I think it's a good point. I think it's a good point. I mean, um, you know, I, I think that uh, I think a lot of people um, are struggling a lot with this situation because usually we're so distracted by so much, and you know, we have uh, work and our careers to distract us. We have friends, events, we have clothing, shopping, restaurants, going out, partying, clubbing. You know, doing all this stuff to distract us from how we really feel about either ourselves or our lives. And I think that now that, you know, the world has taken away all these distractions, you know, I think we're all facing each other and some people are harnessing that and saying, okay, like I do feel uncomfortable with myself or, you know, I need to work on myself. And I'm now realizing when my identity is taken away from me, I feel a lack or actually I feel really good because now all this stuff is just excess, but I really feel good about where I am. So it's more, um, you know, it's it's, uh, it's empowering, but you see a lot of people who are just also being very nervous about um, facing themselves. So that's why, like, you go to you know, like a lot of drugs now, um, a lot of alcohol. Uh, you know, you see all the stores are all putting their alcohol to the front. You know, I hear in the UK, um, and I think that there's nothing wrong with like relaxing and having some wine, or if you know, if like you like smoking a J or you know whatever you do, having an edible. Like I don't know. But when you're doing that to like relax and decompress, and I think that's fine, but I think that people need to be aware of, you know, whether they're using them as additional distractions and like they're drinking all the time now and they're smoking even more and they're doing even more drugs. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully self-harm is not a part of that right now. Um, but I think that, you know, the fact that people really are facing themselves for the first time ever with like literally identities are gone, business, everything. Um, you know, I think that it's uh, the mental health issue behind this is, is more than just being bored. Um, and I think that people need to, to identify. And if they're not in a good place on their own, then I think that what they need to do is, you know, just t just do little things. Like, take five minutes out of your day every few hours to just meditate and breathe. Like, it doesn't have to be a, an hour yogi session. Um, you know what I mean? Like, just getting up and just exercising. Like, go on a YouTube and turn on a five, 10 minute yoga session or a five, 10 minute, like, you know, full active heart rate session. Um, and just to, just the little things, cause that's going to compound over time. And like, you know, I'm just, I, I'm, you know, like I said, like behind the scenes, I'm not just sharing a like, you know, a device on business and strategies. Like I'm checking in on people and, you know, if, if, if I've gotten a message from somebody that doesn't sound like they're so well, and I talk to them, I'll check back in a couple of weeks later or a few days later just to be like, hey, just want to check in, see how you're doing. Um, and, you know, I don't expect that, oh, I'm great, thanks. Some people are like, yo, I'm not coping. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I'm really, you know, I'm empathetic to the, the, the dynamic of, of mental spaces right now. And I just really hope everyone's taking care, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I do the, do the same as well. Like I try to call my friends, like, of course, like if you, if you don't want to talk, you don't have to pick up the phone, you know, like I'm not here. Like why the hell isn't this person saying a phone call? But they are like, currently there are a couple of friends that I know that I have not heard of anything since, since the, um, the lockdown. Like, I mean, like completely disappeared from social media and everything. And I've tried to reach out, nothing. So I constantly carry that sort of worry. You know, it's like, it's almost like the worry is not only about myself or my loved ones, but just like in, in general, because, you know, I, I mean, it's like, we do not have to connect with everyone or we don't have to like everyone, but it's, it's, I think it's within our humanity that you should never like wish anything bad for someone to happen, you know? So I always keep this sort of like a uh, guideline within myself. So I, I've, I've kind of noticed that I'm more worried about the world and the other people in it than I am about myself. Maybe that's the reason why I felt the urge to do this, you know, because it's just the same way as everyone else. Like, you know, my shoot stopped. I can't, I can't go and just rock up to a uh, designer's showroom or PRs and say like, yeah, let's we're going to shoot this for that. Like, just the same way as Italian Vogue just put like literally a white copper, which I find it extremely, extremely innovative and uh, self-explanatory about what is the current times and as a fashion stylist and art director I, I i believe that my duty and the reason why i do what i do is to reflect the times what right. is trending at this very minute and that the crisis is the main focus so what i need to focus my creative energy is towards people and if i can even help one or two or even a half a person feel better by doing this, then it's worth it, and I'm not gonna stop. I get it. I, get it. I think it's very commendable. Uh, so, just like a, the, from from that uh, topic, just in in the sense of like like what you mentioned that you've focused not only on work wise but also sh socially, like uh, lifting up your contacts. Uh, how how is this affecting how your professional um, being is um, going through the sort of evolution do you see there's an evolution do you see that you have to completely reinvent or that you can still remain somewhat what you did before yeah so it's interesting with me so um, I'm actually in, in a really good place right now with my professional because it actually the situation like this allows me to lean into more of what I do not less and it allows me to strengthen the things that I do as opposed to have to like pivot different ways. So as a brand consultant and creative strategist, I'm also very holistic in my approach. So a big part of what I do with my clients is actually that mental game and that mental space and it's helping them through it. It's not just black and white point form notes telling them to do stuff. It's really that human approach and touch. Um, and uh, a lot of my clients tell me they really enjoy that and I didn't know. So I actually, so for anybody who hasn't worked for, with me yet, um, I, I record all my sessions and I originally did that to give it to my clients so they could just listen to like the information there. But then I found out over time, which was really interesting was that the, like my voice, the way that I say things, how I process certain situations was giving them a lot of value as well, not just the info. Um, so, uh, so it's really fascinating. So now in this kind of space, it allows me to lean into that more. Like, you know, I'm, I'm helping a lot more people. I'm doing a lot of lives. Like, you know, if anybody hasn't seen my last lives, I really recommend you look at them. They're on my feed because I'm giving tons of advice, tons of feedback, um, tons of insights, a lot of strategy talks with people because I'm really trying to give as much as I can. And so as a, as a, as somebody who I am, um, I'm not all about holding my stuff back and saying like, well, you got to pay me for my info. I'm always sharing, like, you know what I mean? Even outside of my services, like you look at my Instagram, I'm always sharing tips and tricks. I'm talking to people, I'm sending DM, like it's all the time. So now I looked at that and I was like, and in this time, I'm like, this is actually a really great place and time for me to like over, like, like, you know, kind of over deliver. So like 
I'm giving even more advice for free and I'm sharing even more of myself and I'm, 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 I'm in a really nice place where, where my strengths are in this point in time is what a lot of other people need. And so I'm not capitalizing on that. I mean, I'm actually giving like so much and it makes me feel super good to be able to really feel like I can be fully myself now. It's not kind of this like, you know, it's not a strategy game right now for me. It's, a, it's very much a human game. Um, you know, and then, uh, yeah, so it's really great. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I, I guess that's kind of my answer there without going too much more in. Like, no, really yeah, to I, I, to, I totally agree with that, especially like in what I keep on saying, like have, have been saying before, before the crisis and even now for, for any type of people who want to get into the industry that I work in. Or, and I think it applies to every single industry, like always, 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 you know, compete with yourself you know if somebody's doing better somebody's doing worse you know do not reflect your ego or yourself on that because they, we all have our different journeys you know like there are certain things that we are meant to learn in our own time and you know that's where the lesson is so you, you're going to be fine you know people are always like oh who is your favorite this and who's your biggest competitor like i i am the one I need to impress. I am the one who I need to compete against and overcome when my saboteur tells me you can't do this, you can't do that, or just the same way I can be the best hype man that I can be for myself. And that's what I always try to encourage everybody to do. And the same way to try and give back because that makes the environment where we are and where we work better for even for us and for for everybody around us. I totally agree. So, so that's the sort of thing, and it's like it's quite funny even with this project that because like um, my approach is always very ambitious, you know, like I'm very anal about like oh, certain has to look like this and this and this. Like I can't just say like ah, oh, yo, yo, come like in two days, you know, see you there. You know, it's not my, it's not my style. So a lot of people, their automatic re response to me was, uh, do I need to pay to be part of this? Uh, you know. What, what are you trying to gain out of this? Like, are you trying to do this? And I'm like, uh, like hell to the no. Like, you know, I can care less if there is a single penny coming my way, as long as I can get this message out. Because I feel like in, in a universal level that we are struggling, you know, I am I'm almost 35 years old. So I consider myself lucky to have lived the time before internet, before cell phones, you know, like I know what it is to sit in a, in a house without that sort of like amusement. And I know how to amuse myself and I know how to form the connection, look people in the eyes and all of that sort of stuff. So I think this is very good reminder, even though the context of what is going on is horrendous. You know, the price that we have to pay in 100%. order for that is, is horrible. Like it's absolutely horrible. But like, I, I feel like it's for some, some reason, like in this type of situation, we don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get sick, you're going to get sick, somebody's going to get sick. But the thing is like, you know, just try to push for the for the better things and trying to see the positive there. So, so how do you see the world after the COVID-19 crisis is over? Uh, I see it in a much better place. Um, I know it sounds for a lot of people, I don't know, I don't know how it sounds to other people, but like, I really believe that light and humanity is winning for the first time, literally in what it feels like ever. And, you know, I feel that I see so much support and I see so many people reaching out and I'm, I'm you know, everybody who is like demonizing social media, it's bringing people so close together. People are sharing memes to make people laugh now. Like people are doing lives to connect, DMs like Zoom, right? Skypes, like, you know, all these FaceTimes. I, I think that everyone's there to make sure everyone's okay. Um, I understand that people go in isolation and, and I don't judge anyone's process. Like, I think that it's great for everybody, but I think that it's essentially the great equalizer of our times in terms of industry, um, in terms of exposing our humanities, um, in terms of really leveling out mental health. I know that some people might be going through right now and I empathize and if anybody is, please feel free to reach out because um, I, I understand being, whether you're alone or in a space that's just not, you know, you're just unsure. Um, I understand that it's really difficult, but I think ultimately a lot of people will come out of this and realize like, wow, humanity is really good. Like, look, we all came together. Like I connected with my neighbors. I connected with my family. I, my communities on social media are much deeper now. 
um, you know, I think that those things are really, really important to be aware of. And like, I really think that we're going to come out and, you know, in terms of like the business and all that stuff, you know, I know a lot of freelancers are struggling. Um, and I understand that a lot of people are like, you know, they're not getting paid and, you know, they're, they're really suffering and they don't know what's going to happen after this. And I think that a lot of, I think that it'll be a really interesting mental health space for a lot of people because once this is all done, I think a lot of people will reflect and, you know, so for example, when I say why, why it's going to help the mental health of a lot of these freelancers is because they might realize that the last four years they've been living paycheck to paycheck, barely, you know, barely surviving, chasing, uh, invoices like crazy and like not enjoying the people they work with off because they're so romantic and because it was their like dream to be in there. But now that they take a pause and they're forced to do that, I think a lot of people will come out of this and just be like, you know what? I don't want to go back to that. I didn't feel good about myself. Like, I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck and stress and work in an industry that doesn't make me feel good. Like, and I think that they'll pivot to things that makes them happy. And I think that people will find happiness. Even, like, even if they might be in, in dark times right now, the light's winning and it's going to happen. We will get a cure. You know what I mean? The world is not going to end off of this. Um, and I think that when it's done, even if you're in a dark space now, you know, when all this is said and done and the, the light is there, I think people will make some decisions based on happiness more than finances, more based on clout. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be good and for the other ones that love it. And they're like, man, I can't wait to keep on doing this or they're innovating and they're being really, you know, then that's a really great place for people to be as well. I mean, you know, I'm innovating my business in terms of like looking at what it's going to be after all of this. And I say it all the time and, you know, the way forward from this, no matter what you do, whether it's a, whether it's a product or service, um, the way forward is going to be empathy. It's not going to be products or services. And if you can understand how to formulate business that provides value for people, that makes people feel good, um, that really like like brings up people's lives, and you're excited about that, then that's also a great place to be. Um, so I think that the world is going to be in a really great place. Um, I see it happening, and I have a lot of conversations with people that, like I said, they might be in a dark place now, but it's because they're processing. And they've never done that before. And like, I know it's sad, like they might be in a bad place now, but I hear them and I'm like, wow, I'm so proud of you because you're finally processing things that you haven't had to before because you've been so distracted or you never even realized that it was even an issue to begin with. And now you're faced with your, with your humanity. And I think it's, it's empowering. I think that even if you're in a bad place right now, I think the fact that you're processing it all is, is really fundamentally going to just lead to more happiness. Totally. Totally, and and uh, that is, that is the reason why we're sitting here right now is is that concern because I I've always been a, you know that type of uh, little boy that I've always processed stuff I've always been the lucky one in the sort of sense that I was brought up to question things and uh, to be told like if you don't want to do something don't do it and you know like you have to do the things that feel good for you even though you would have to do it alone so i've i've had to face that many times when people say no you're not you can't do that no you're not gonna be that no 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 and still here i am just because you know I've, i found found that strength somewhere to say to myself like you know well if i go what they say am i gonna be happy the answer is no because you found what makes you happy yeah, yeah. Am, I, am, am i happy now in the situation not so much what can I do about it. So for that's what I see is sort of like the golden rule here. And and I believe like and I want to encourage everybody, like because I know that there are people who are stressed about paying their rent, you know, having the, you know, phone bills, whatever it is. You know, this you don't have to like and this is for everybody who is seeing it, who's gonna see this uh, after this life is done. Like, you know, you don't have to feel embarrassed or feel shit about the fact that if you don't have money to pay something like that it's just money you are here you know i i am in the same situation as as, as many people in the world like people think that i'm swimming in cash based on the facts that what i create you know reality check i'm a master of no budget zero pounds euros dineros whatever currency i'm a master of that but i'm still the same way in the current uh, current situation that couldn't pay for my student loans, couldn't pay for my phone bill, my phone got cut off, I'm waiting for companies to pay their invoices that are late. But instead of like focusing on the fact that, you know, fuck, this is happening, 
you know, pick up the phone call, call them. I called my bank in sure. Finland where I'm from and they said that, do you want to pay this? And I was like, of course, but at the moment I can't. So they gave me like completely like you're free until the end of the year because we understand. So I mean that there is compassion, but you know, it's good to be strong, but the biggest strength sometimes is to ask for help. And that, that's been mm -hmm. one of the like very, very big lessons to me because I've always been sort of powerhouse that, you know, I'll, I'll find my way through. So No, it's true. It's true. I mean, you know, I think that like right now when a lot of people are very, I mean, I think what a lot of people need to re remember is that the whole world's going through this. Like, you know, you might be, you know, if you're a freelancer or a small business, like there's multi-billion dollar business going out of business. There's people getting fired from salary, like like massive salary jobs. Um, you know, there's people that have mortgages and kids and homes and, you know, that, you know, I, like, and I'm not saying that, like, that that's not bad either, uh, like, or that makes things better. It just means that, like, everyone's going through it. And ultimately right now, like by law, you're not allowed to get kicked out of your home. I'm pretty sure in every country. So they can't, they, you, even if you can't pay your rent right now, like you have a place to stay, a roof over your head. You, you know, you have, if you're watching this and you're lucky enough to, to do this, you probably have food in your fridge. If you don't, hopefully you have family or somebody that can send you some money, like, you know, 10, 15 bucks. So I think we're all essentially in a better p place if we really like, you know, look at, um, you know, really how much we do have even in lack, right? Like you, it, it's, it's being, um, it's funny because people, people like when you say like you're an optimist, like, Oh, you're an optimist. And I'm like, I'm actually a progressiveness. <laughs> I don't believe in blind optimism. I be, I believe in being progressive and looking at the situation for what it is and, and, and figuring out how to make it better. Like, you know, if you're not on the, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I just think we have a lot of things to be grateful for. And then listen, ultimately, if all this is done and you need to, you know, sell your home and rent for a little bit, or you need to move back into your uh, parents' house for a few months. The whole world is going to be adjusting during that time. You're not going to be the only one going through it. Everyone's going to reset to some extent. And, uh, you, you know, four, five, six months, like you have another 50, 60, 70 years to live, you yeah, know, like a few months to, to restructure and, and take that pressure off and be like, wow, I don't have expenses or not as much anymore. I can really think about my life and I, I just I, I, like now I can just step back from everything and just reassess and put myself in a better place and then just kind of move forward. You know, I think that, you know, I think it's perspective and I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that this is easy. I have my hard days and, you know, I've gone through stuff in times where the whole world was good. Like I've been yes. in times where the whole world was doing incredible and there was no viruses and I was in terrible places. Um, but I had to, I had to figure it out and I had to decide what my steps were going to be. And like you said, it's like, you know, I don't think that like, if, if you love the industry that you're in and you're living paycheck to paycheck and that's okay. And you're happy because you get to be in the industry and you get to cover your rent and you get to, then that's great. Like if you love that, then that's awesome. You'll probably stay in the game. If you realize that you don't like that, well then you'll pivot. And I think that it, it comes down to just being self-aware and, 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 figuring out where your happiness is because we can see right now like money doesn't mean anything no. there's probably people sitting at home with so much money in the bank going but i can't do anything with it now anyways and i have all this money but i'm not happy like, i'm just not happy you know like i don't think money defines you know happiness i think that it provides options there's no question i'm not saying that it doesn't help um to take some of the stress away but i think fundamentally like you know it, it comes down to happiness and figuring that out above anything else and uh you know um yeah no but it's totally and uh like going back to where you started uh i am i am an optimist but i i would call myself more like a realistic a realistic optimist so i always look at everything objectively and my i personally like big one of my biggest pet peeves is when people say like oh think positive only positive thoughts sunshine 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 What's the point of having great positive things if you don't know what the negative is? It's then the same shit. From yeah, the don't blind yourself, man. Right? So it's almost like for, for me, for me being a creative, sometimes like the biggest hits are the ones that have forced me to rebuild, rethink about patterns that were not working in the first place, to then get me to the to the second level. That's what I what I keep on saying to people that you know evolving as a person or as a profession is never easy 
growing pains are difficult. Healing is difficult, but the progress will never happen until you're ready to face the pain. Because you know, what is always I after agree. the pain, there's going to be something so great that it's going to feel a lot more greater than how it felt before. I agree. So that's how I kind of see it. That I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing to say. Like you know what, I feel like shit right now, or I feel like Super this, boring. and. You know, I think it's it's normal, it's healthy to feel sometimes like that. Of course, if you always feel like that, then I would say, please voice it out because there are there are ways for you to get out of that. But of I, but I also find it's like it's a bit deranged if you're always happy because, yeah, because then it's almost like you're you're masking something. It's a uh, it's um yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. It's like it's like um, you know Tony Tony Robbins uh, you know said something a long time ago and it stuck with me and it's like going to your garden and looking at the weeds and yelling that there's no weeds in your garden while they're literally in front of you isn't going to improve your garden. No, like you need to acknowledge the, the situations that are going. You know, I think having a progressive and a positive mind. It's funny. So when what, okay, so it's a very interesting conversation right now because I don't have this very much on these kind of things. So this is really great. I really, I'm really enjoying this by the way. So, um, I think that, um, the way that I see positivity is like this. It's like positivity is okay. So it's really easy to be happy when everything's great and you have money and your friends are loving you and you're in a great relationship and your business is soaring and you got money in the bank and you're going on vacations. Like anybody could be happy there. That's not true optimism. That's not true positivity. That's just like, everything's great. I got nothing to think about. I believe that positivity and optimism is actually what gets you through the hard times. So that's what it really, that's when you really need to be positive and optimistic because when you're going through it, the optimism and the positivity is what's going to get you through it. Yeah, exactly. You don't need optimist, like you don't need optimism to get you through great times. No. You, like, so you need it. Like it actually comes into play when you're going through it. And you have to really focus on those moments, on the progress, and on the optimistic mindset to get you through for however long that is. Like you know, um, so that's how I see optimism. Yeah, it, but it's, 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 like, a, it's, it's a tool. It's the famous saying, like it's, it's not about the destination; it's about the journey. And yeah, it's not come. Yeah, and if you don't enjoy, you know, that's why I feel like us humans sometimes struggle with the fact that you know. When everything goes great, we will have these periods that everything will go great for like 20 years. You know, you you meet the love of your life, you get the kids, you get the cars, you get all of this, you have great family unit, you have great job. Then something, one thing happens that you did not expect. Like for example, um, your father passes away or gets sick. And all of a sudden that one little thing will destroy everything because you were not prepared for it. Because that's what I mean. It's like we cannot live in this type of limbo that even though there are the great things that we all want to focus on, but we still have to keep keep our other eye on the realities of life. And this is one of them. And I think that's why uh, there's so much like panic around this type of like a crisis because people do not didn't see it coming. They just didn't see it coming and they don't want to acknowledge it. And, but it's here. It's here and now we're going through it and we will get through it. But anyways, we've been rambling around in, the, in amazing topics. So now it's time for questions. I don't know if you have like little ticks on your question box, but I do. We'll go for it. Um, we have about 10 minutes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, go, go for it. Any questions, like we said, I mean, nothing's really off limits here. So... Um, you know, let, let's go through the questions that your audience is sharing. Uh, I have to turn that light on for a second. Let's get so, so obviously everybody is like, you, you still have time to send questions. We're going to be try to do as fast as possible. We're not going to tell anybody's name. So we're not going to call you out. I hate you, Mark. Um, so here's one question. How bad is the fashion industry been affected and how do you see it bouncing back? So, okay. So I think the fashion industry has been affected in insanely positive ways because it's completely equalizing and completely cleaning up all the toxicity in the industry so yes if you look at it at the micro and like this momentary thing there's tons of bad things happening like you know like there's you know there's factories are not getting paid 
Uh, there's companies that are stopping all production and not paying for that kind of stuff. Uh, there's businesses shuttering their doors, retail suffering. A lot of PR companies are going under, uh, out of business. You know, a lot of freelancers are really struggling. Like, I, if you look at it as in like this very moment, then yes, it's not a good place to actually look at and say, this is good, like, this is good. But if you look at it as like an industry and how it's affecting the industry and like whether it's good or bad for the industry, not for individual people, it's the best time because it's going to really tighten up. So the companies that are doing really good and creating a lot of value and can figure out how to navigate from this are going to do it. Like I was saying, you know, like the, uh, the, the world doesn't need 700,000 freelance makeup artists. Like, exactly. and, that, and that's not, that's not me being an asshole. It's just like, if you're really good and passionate and you keep on going, then that's great. Like I want everyone to succeed. I don't want anybody to fail, but like, we're now looking at like, you know, uh, company cultures are going to get so much tighter and they're getting so much, you know, a, a lot more uh, concentrated and, 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 and creating a lot more internal value. Businesses are now like really trying to take care of their consumers. And so all their, um, all their actions are really, you know, progressively moving forward. Like you can, you can, you can DM almost any company right now and they're getting back to you like on the snap, like customer services at a super peak, like, you know, um, all these brands, like we don't need a million brands. It's not sustainable. And it's like, it's been so easy to just have a fashion brand, but that's adding so much into the system. And it's like, you can have, I, I mean, I can't even begin to imagine how many brands are out there that make no money for three seasons and then fold. But think about all that waste that like they haven't sold. And it's all this goods just sitting around like, you know, so I think that the industry is going to be in a great place. I think it's kind of hard to predict exactly where it's going to be because there's going to be a lot of ripple effects. But just like anything, just like a recession, you know what I mean? Like, just like economies, you know, crashing, like, it's going to take some time to rebuild, but it's going to rebuild stronger. And, you know, I have been in the industry for 20 years now, and I've seen it change dramatically, and it's changed a lot for the better. There's some good conversations, but ultimately, at the same time, there's been a lot of bad in there, and a lot of mental health issues, and a lot of sustainability issues, and a lot of just brands, just misbe, just not just bad practical behaviors and so i think that ultimately the industry will bounce back stronger with the players that were able to make it you know just because you make it through this time though doesn't mean that you're still going to be a good business when this is done so i think that after all this as well some of the businesses that are still in might not make it because you know you need to be more aware and so you know i think it's going to be great I, I really really do i think the fashion industry is in a place of reset and adjustment i think it really needed this um, and I'm, I'm involved as well, right? Like you are as well. Like this doesn't exclude me. I'm not like above anything. And I, and like, I also still think it's a great thing. Like, I also still think it's great for whatever happens. I will navigate it. I will figure it out. Um, and ultimately it, I, I just know that the landscape is, is going to be much healthier, you know, in six months, 12 months, 18 months, okay. you know, and, and that's kind of what I talk like when, when I tell people that I've been in the industry for 20 years, I say it because that's the long-term perspective. Like, I'm not expecting the industry to heal itself in three months, but I know that I'm going to be here for a long time. So if it heals itself in 12 months or 18 months, that makes me super happy because that means there's going to be another 20, 30 years of greatness and we just have to navigate the next 18, you know? Yeah, totally. For me, like before you run out of time, like my answer to that is as, as a fellow person, even though my youngish age, I've been in the industry for a good two decades. So I've kind of seen seen the, the yeah. You started super early, right? Yeah. You started no, early. I was I was a baby, so I was really really a baby. Like just you started modeling, right? Like sixteen, yeah. like modeling. No, I started when I was fifteen, so so I was very young when I started like getting my brains to fuse. Like it was almost like I always said that the the career chose me, not the other way, or the industry chose me. So it was never I was supposed to be a ballet dancer, but that I can tell in another another time. Another time. Uh, but uh, how I see it now is because. The the massive growth of overconsumption over and fast fashion, like that everybody has to have a new pair of shoes every week, that has, or like new t-shirt, and the price is like, can't pay this much. So all of the sort of like brands that I grew up with and what, you know, loved, like there was like, even like the iconic brands like John Paul Cartier, Versace, all of them, they were known for a specific specific thing and the customers would go for that specific thing no matter how long you take that they get exactly what they wanted so it's almost like a tailored service or as we know still in Paris haute couture that it's like made to measure for a person 
So I, I see that now, obviously, this is going to change, that we have to reverse back to being artisans, being going back to the source. What is the core function of everything? So obviously that means that a lot of this sort of overconsumption in these kind of companies, these sort of like what I call fast food companies, will have to close because people won't have the same buying power anymore. So more realistically, what I see as in point of fashion, people will buy less, but they will buy more quality, which is all about it. And then if, if so, then that's also going to be more sustainable. That also means that when we get rid of all of this sort of like the problems with what is the, the, the supply chain of fast fashion, we actually then can employ more people who can work more on a garment or any type of specific key elements. The big conversation you have to produce like that. Right. So, so I see a lot of positivity and, and I hope so if, there, if there's anybody in the fashion industry, think about that. Uh, before I let you go, we have five minutes. I'm going to have a speed round of questions. Stupid questions. Make it a bit more light. So don't have to be so old, goddamn. Okay, it. yeah, yeah, no, let's go for it. Let's, let's so, it. so I'm going to ask you social media face to face. Uh, <laughs> wow. Um, can I say both? Yeah, but, but yeah. I, well, I'm, I'm sure that that answer speaks volumes. No, uh, no, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I have to say both. I, there's no way I can choose. I think they're both fantastic. Great. Uh, chicken or beef? Beef. I, I would have said beef. <laughs> but, but, uh, black, or, black or white or color? Um, but, uh, audio visual, visual, love or lust, love, plan or spontaneous, plan, <laughs> cats or dogs, dogs, and, uh, the last one, wealth or happiness, happiness. Amazing. Vesta, thank you so kindly for having me on. This was really, really fun. We spoke about so many things I don't get a chance to like talk about or even get asked because it's usually people just throw so much business at me, which I love, but this was a really nice change. So I really appreciate no, but it. Like, I, I really thank you because there's, there's been so, 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 so many questions that have come from like different companies, from private people asking like, what is this project that about? Like the reality of this, that we're actually sitting here healing the world, even like this one little Morse code at a time and started this is I literally had this idea last week and all of this happened now. So it's, it's, Super I, I just want, want this to become a manifestation that anybody anywhere can create whatever you want if you put your mind and, uh, heart into it. Nothing starts from like the top tier. You have to start from somewhere. And the point is, connect with the people no man is an island we will get through this no this human is an island this is going to be an amazing and this is only the beginning and then uh send me uh send me more questions if you want to see yossi again maybe we do a part two you know revisit it but uh there's going to be a lot a lot of surprises coming to all of your ways from from vesa vesa's morse code camp and uh the next episode is already on Friday. Love you loads, Yossi, and uh, have a great evening, all of you. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. Really, means the world. It always does. Yeah, and remember, if you missed the episode, you can watch it 24 hours on, on both of our feeds. And on a surprise note, all of the live episodes are going to be turned into YouTube format. So you can go and revisit all of your favorite talks whenever you want. So feel free, there's no pressure here. You don't have to be available all the time. Like, I am... But try to be, because he's a good dude and he wants your support. <laughs> well, support, support, let's support all each oh. other. That's all I care about. Amen. If, if, if we make you guys smile, that's all cool. I need. Right. Uh, yeah. Have a good evening, Yossi. Thank you, you too. Bye, everybody. Bye. Peace.